tipped me again. Good morning, and a happy 4th of July to everyone. Deb, you faked me out two weeks in a row now, where I thought in the middle of the song you were done, and you caused me to come stand up here and look like a fool. <laughs> I believe she's doing it on purpose, but, <laughs> but thanks, Deb. As always, thank you so much. Um, I was reminded this morning uh, on Facebook by a dear friend of mine who was reflecting on the 4th of July and independence and reminding us all that the Declaration of Independence was more of a statement of ideals, of what the hopes were for our nation, that it wasn't a done deal. You know, it wasn't a done deal ever that we hold these truths to be self-evident that all people are created equal. It was an ideal to strive for. I think that's a good reminder on every 4th of July, that we keep striving to be that, a nation where we all can live in peace, where we all indeed are created equal. I'm grateful to my friend Alicia this morning for that reminder on this day when sometimes we just get caught up in fireworks and picnics and, and all the fun of it, but a reminder that as a nation, as a people, we still have a lot of work to do. A reminder of a couple of meetings that are coming up very quickly. This Thursday at 7 p.m. right here in the sanctuary, uh, the church council had asked for a group from the congregational resource team of the synod to do some interviews with some of our members to check in with us to see how we're doing on our mission and ministry here at St. Mary's. And they will be giving their report on Thursday evening. While it's directly intended for the church council, to listen to, to review, and to talk about next steps. It's for all of us to hear as well. So you are all welcome 
to come this Thursday evening. If you haven't already marked it on your calendar, mark July 25th following our 9 a.m. worship is the annual meeting of the congregation. And then also it is Christmas in July. We've, we're July, so now it's time for Christmas in July. And so it's our annual collection of personal items, and we're already off to a good start back there. But any Sunday during July, please bring those items by. Or if you're watching on Facebook and say, well, I don't get there on Sunday morning, you can stop by the church office any day of the week. Come in the morning, we'll buzz you in, and you can leave it right inside the entry door by the offices as well. I've got to turn down the volume on my computer here. It's, that's what I, if you're hearing a little bit of noise, that's what's going on. Um, our worship this morning and through July is based on the service of the word that is found in our little With One Voice, the blue hymn book. It has a little bit different format. Um, it's not meant to have a sermon. Sorry, you're going to get one anyway. Um, and it's not meant to have communion either. But there's a little bit different rhythm to it in that following the sermon, we will do the creed, but there's also confession right at that point rather than at the beginning of worship. And um, then that's followed up by the prayers and then the sharing of the peace. It's a bit of a reminder that when we confess, we are being reconciled to God, but also to one another. And so I think that rhythm of it is actually kind of cool that you've got to go through those steps. You can't share the peace with people if you're not reconciled to them. Otherwise, it's a fraud. So it's a very interesting way to look at this. Um, I also noticed, and we'll make the correction last week, that with one voice was printed before the changes to the creed. So um, descended to the dead rather than descended to hell, or it's descended to hell in this text rather than descended to the dead. So it's very interesting. Uh, I will fix that for next week. That is all the announcements that I have for this morning. We begin our worship singing the gathering song, Great God, Your Love Has Called Us.
Let us pray. God of the covenant, in our baptism you called us to proclaim the coming of your kingdom. Give us the courage you gave the apostles that we may faithfully witness to your love and peace in every circumstance of life. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Ezekiel. A voice said to me, O mortal, stand on your feet, and I will speak with you. And when he spoke to me, a spirit entered into me and set me on my feet. And I heard him speaking to me. He said to me, mortal, I am sending you to the people of Israel, to a nation of rebels who have rebelled against me. <clears throat> they and their ancestors have transgressed against me to this very day. The descendants are impudent and stubborn. I am sending you to them, and you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God, whether they hear or refuse to hear, for they are rebellious house. They shall know that there has been a prophet among them. The word of the Lord. Psalm 123. To you I lift up my eyes, to you enthroned in the heavens. As the eyes of servants look to the hand of their masters, and the eyes of the maid to the hand of their mistress, so our eyes look to you until you show us your mercy. Have mercy upon us, O Lord, have mercy. For we have had more than enough of contempt, too much of the scorn of the indolent rich and of the derisions of the proud. A reading from Second Corinthians. I know a person in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up by the third heaven. Whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that such a person, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. Was caught up into paradise and heard things that are not to be told, that no mortal is permitted to repeat. On behalf of such a one, I will boast, but on my own behalf, I will not boast, except from my weaknesses. But if I wish to boast, I will not be a fool, for I will be speaking the truth, but I refrain from it, so that no one may think better of me than what is seen in me or heard from me even considering the exceptional character of the revelations. Therefore, to keep me from being too elated, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I appealed to the Lord about this, that it would leave me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For power is made perfect in weakness, so I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities for the sake of Christ. For whenever I am weak, then I am strong. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus came to his hometown and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue and many who heard him were astounded. They said, where did, where did, this, man, where, where did this man get all this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, and brother of James, and Joseph, and Judas, and Simon, and are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. 
Then Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honor except in their hometown and among their kin and in their own house. And he could do no deed of power there except that he laid hands on a few sick people and cured them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. Then he went about among the villages teaching. He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. One of my uh, favorite Christmas songs is an interesting Christmas song because it was never meant to be a Christmas song. (laughs) It's a song that was uh, written and performed by Kenny Loggins. The name of the song is Celebrate Me Home. He hadn't intended to write a holiday song, but his producer, uh, Phil Ramone, had encouraged him to do so because Longins had expressed that this particular Christmas season, he wasn't going to be able to be home, that he was going to be in New York rather than in California with his family, and he was encouraged to write it all down. Now, it's not a peppy song for Christmas, and it's not really a sad song either, but um, there's a bit of melancholy to it, to be honest. Um, I find it to be brilliantly written and conceived. It also points out that sometimes family gatherings just don't quite go as well as you might think. Or if anything, there's an anticipation that there might be something that's going to happen. In, In one place in the song, he writes, Come on, Mama, come on, Daddy, please, what you want from me? I'll be strong or I'll be weak. There's something going on with Kenny's family where he has this pleading. But here's the first few phrases, the first few uh, sections of the song. Home for the holidays, I believe I've missed each and every face. Come on and play my music. Let's turn on every love light in the place. It's time I found myself totally surrounded in your circles. Oh, my friends. Please celebrate me home. Give me a number. Please celebrate me home. Play me one more song that I'll always remember and I can recall whenever I find myself too all alone, I can sing me home. Reading the lyrics, don't do it justice. Look it up. (laughs) Find it on YouTube. It is just an amazing song. If you love jazz, there's some really good jazz licks in there as well. Anyone who's gone on a long trip, you know, you get to that point somewhere on the trip where you're just longing to be home. I find myself, especially when I go to conferences, you know, you you get tired after a few days of hearing people talking at you all day long, and you just want to go home and get back to normal a little bit. I, I can't even count the number of times that I've heard this song playing, you know, while in my head while traveling home. As we saw earlier with Jesus, these homecomings don't always go so well. Remember earlier where Jesus comes home and his family members are trying to shuffle him off to the side because they're afraid that the ruling authorities, that the ruling religious authorities are going to come after them as well. They try to shush Jesus. Let's just call it for what it is. They wanted to shush him. This time is different because it's not his house home, you know, where he grew up, but it's his faith home where he shows up. It starts out really well. I mean, it says in the text, they were astounded at his teaching. But often at gatherings, someone took offense at something, whether it was something 
from Jesus' childhood that they were remembering, whether it was something that he said that challenged them too much or they disagreed with, they were nonetheless offended. Let me remind you. It says they were astounded. They said, where did this man get all of this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? And then the next line, is this not the carpenters, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joses and Judas and Simon, and are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. That's a fast turn. I mean, even for Mark's gospel, that's a fast turn from, wow, look at the powers and being astounded to, wait a minute here. In what they said, there's a couple of references in there that are rather troubling. First, Jesus is identified as the carpenter. Isn't this the carpenter? In first century world, and in the Greek especially, this word that's used for carpenter is a word that also can be used for all kinds of other artisan sort of trades, like bricklayers and things like that. It is for certain a class, the artisan class. I even found one scholar who laid out what professions are in the class, and Jesus being a carpenter would be down towards the bottom in the class system. You're born into this class. And it would be the most rare of occurrences that one would move up that scale at all. When you're there, you're there. That's the first thing. So he's labeled by class. The second thing, I don't know if you noticed this one, the son of Mary. Not the son of Joseph. There's no mention of a father here. This was someone challenging the legitimacy of the birth of Jesus. That's no small thing either. Much less so today. But most of us who are here today, we're old enough to know that in our lifetimes, the child of a couple that's unmarried had issues with legitimacy as well. Thank God, not so much today. So here we have Jesus being labeled by people as being an illegitimate child who is also of this lower class, which, by the way, also means that most likely Jesus was illiterate because people in those lower classes were not educated. Have you ever thought of that before, that your Lord and Savior was illiterate? That's really an interesting one to ponder. Let's not get distracted by it, but it's one really to think about. They took offense at him. That word, the Greek word, is skandalizo. You probably hear the word scandal in there. This was scandal that was being pointed out. Now in Matthew and in Luke, the writers clean that up a little bit and they include Joseph into this. But nonetheless, here it is in the text. I would imagine that for Jesus... The question might be similar to what Kenny Loggins asked in his song. What you want from me? You've heard the stories. I just raised a little girl from the dead. I stopped a woman from bleeding. For 12 years she's been bleeding, and I stopped that. You know me. I grew up here. You've heard the stories. And you know that I like little things in the text, too, that catch my attention. Here's one that caught my attention. And he could do no deed of power there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. I find that rather funny. That's not a big deal? <laughs> that he cured them? But in the scale of things... Jesus healed some folks that were sick, but there wasn't anything big like the raising of the dead. This is on a whole different level. Of course, it could also be the frequency of it, too, that he just cured a few. That's something to ponder as well. 
It seems that in recognizing the unbelief who lived in this town, this town where he grew up, where he matured, where he went to synagogue, it seems that this might have been an epiphany moment, an, an aha moment for Jesus. That now is the time. I mean, Jesus has been trying to train these disciples all along, and there's been many times you feel like he's at that point where he's going to release them onto the world, but they're not ready yet. But now is the time. Despite their unbelief, despite their wavering at best in their faith, it's time to turn them loose, to empower them, to give them the power over the evil spirits, to pair them up so they're not alone, and to send them out on the road. But let's be honest, this isn't a really good pep talk that Jesus has given them either. You would think there'd be this big pep talk, all right, are y'all ready? Let's go! And instead, Jesus shows them how even he is rejected. How his power and his words are rejected by people. And by the way, this, this business of knocking the, the dust off from your sandals, it's more than just a little ritual thing. It actually was considered to be a bit of a curse upon the people of that house. You didn't welcome me. I am not taking even the slightest dust particle that will remind me of you with me. We kind of slide by that one, but in reality, this was another really harsh statement from Jesus of what he was telling his disciples to do. But yet Jesus says, get on with it. Get out there and get on with it. You're prepared for everything now, including being prepared for rejection. If you're rejected, go to the next town. It's very similar to what we've been talking about the last two weeks, about get in the boat and go to the other side. There's people waiting over there. Now it's move on to the next town. Just keep going. So, are y'all ready to get out there and do the Lord's work? <laughs> it still has this little bit of a uh, apprehension to it. Now, the preparation of the disciples, for some could be seen as, all right, we're ready. But for others, i got to imagine there was absolute terror of going out and trying to do the same thing. What if I try to heal someone and it fails? What if I try to speak the same things that Jesus has been speaking, but I get it all messed up? And what about what happens if I get rejected by them? Whether this attack on Jesus was born out of some deep-seated jealousy someone had towards him, or it was the classism, or the fact that it was a, not a legitimate birth, or maybe it was something that Jesus said. Maybe it was something that pulled at that little bare thread that started things to unravel for this person. To hear, want, maybe he wanted to hear something comforting rather than something challenging. Whatever it was, Jesus found himself and the disciples found themselves and we will find ourselves in a position where our motives are questioned, our ideas are dismissed, and folks will be letting us know that they just don't want to hear about Jesus. But Jesus says, but there are people who will. And people who will be grateful for your help. People who won't question your motives who will feel comfort in the words of Jesus, will find healing in the word of God and in your very presence. They will find healing. Yeah. Simply your presence can bring healing and peace. So don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged. Go on to another place where you are needed and wanted. And in writing this sermon, that's where I hit the roadblock. I feel like I should say something more. I feel like it needs to be wrapped up in a nice little bow because that's what you're supposed to do in preaching. I had other things I was dealing with, some friends who have some medical issues, things like that. And when I got done with all of that, I found a YouTube video of another concert. 
This one by probably my favorite, uh, James Taylor. It was 10 years ago at Carnegie Hall. I'd never seen the video before. And on the video comes one of my favorite songs of his. And the chorus goes like this. Shower the people you love with love. Show them the way that you feel. Things are going to be much better if you only will. Shower the people. Not just little dribs and dabbles of grace and love, but a downpour. An absolute downpour of love. That's where I think Jesus is getting at here. Thank you, James Taylor. Um, I think that's where Jesus is getting at here. This realization that I can't do it all by myself. Disciples, it's time to go. It's time to get out there. There's so much more to be done than I can do by myself. And sometimes it's hard. Sometimes showering the people with love is the thing to do. Because in the end, love is all you need. Now that's a Beatles tune. Yeah, I've, you don't know this about me, but if you ever came in my office during the day, you'd hear music playing all the time. If you saw me writing a sermon, music is playing. So I always have these in my head. So, but love is all we need. As followers of Jesus, as a community of Christ, as people who are being called to bring the healing of Christ to the world. I think that's a good place to leave it today. Amen. In Christ, you have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. We believe in him and are marked with the seal of the promise, Holy Spirit. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate. He was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come, I believe, in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Build yourselves up on your most holy faith. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in the love of God. Look forward to the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. Behold, everything has become new. God has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Therefore, let us be reconciled to God and to one another. Gracious God, have mercy among us. Passion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. Uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life to the honor and the glory of your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, forgiveness, and remission of all of our sins. Amen. Let us pray. Let us come before the triune God in prayer. We pray for the church that we may risk entering into a deeper relationship with Jesus that will transform us and the way we live. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for courage, that God will empower us to be truth-tellers 
in our everyday circumstances and witnesses to God's presence in our relationships and workplaces. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for greater trust that God will free us from our past mistakes, strengthen us as we recognize our weaknesses, and open us to God's power working within us. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for healing, that the Spirit will comfort us when we are misunderstood, renew us when we have been unjustly criticized, inspire us to show God's love each day, bringing relief to those experiencing drought, renew those who have experienced abuse or crime, and new opportunities for those seeking employment. Heal us from all illness, injury, or affliction. Today we pray for Bob, Debbie, Kelly, Chris, Don, Chip, Lily, Chase, Judy, Paul, and Diana. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for transformation of our hearts that we may recognize our greatest weakness. Surrender it to God and allow God to work within us for God's glory. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all who are alienated from their families or communities, that God will open new opportunities for dialogue, understanding, and reconciliation. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for acceptance of others, that God will help us to be open to the stranger and their gifts as they enter our lives so that we may be nurtured and enriched by them. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for our nation, that God will guide us in living the values which we proclaim so that all may experience life, liberty, and justice, Lord, in your mercy. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace. Sisters and brothers, rejoice. Mend your ways. Encourage one another. Agree with one another. Live in peace. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us give peace to one another. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy God, when your son came to his hometown, the people could not believe that one like them could be so much like you. Yet in wisdom and power, you showed your face despite their unbelief. Send your Holy Spirit upon your church, that all who gather in your name may find in you the joy of their desiring. Send that same Spirit on these ordinary gifts of bread and wine, that they may be for us the body and blood of your Son, Jesus, who at supper with his disciples took bread, gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took a cup of wine, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. 
patient God, in Christ you endured weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities for our sake. You became weak that we might find our true strength lies in you. As you equipped your servant Paul through every challenge to share your gospel, send your Holy Spirit on all who are weak, that they may be upheld by your power. On any who are insulted, that they may hear you calling their name. And on those who are persecuted, that they may know your justice, your vindication, and your peace. Hasten the day when your tired, poor, homeless, and tempest-tossed may breathe free. Lift their lamp beside your golden door and celebrate the banquet of your kingdom. We pray this in the name of our liberating God, Creator, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The disciple came to Jesus and said, Lord, teach us to pray. And he taught them, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Let us dine together. This is the body of Christ given for me and the blood of Christ shed for me. It's the body of Christ given for me and the blood of Christ shed for me. Amen. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. May the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ fill you with every spiritual blessing. May the God of faithfulness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We join in singing our closing song, You Servants of God. His kingdom is glorious and Ascribing salvation. 
Jesus to Jesus again. Salvation to God who sits on the throne. Let cry upon and honor the Son. The praises of Jesus the angels proclaim. All down on their faces and worship the Lamb. And let us adore and give Him His right. All glory and power and wisdom and might. Honor and blessing with angels above. And grace never ceasing. Go in peace, you are the body of Christ. Thanks be to God.